In this video, we are going to go over the answers to Part C of the June 2019 Chemistry Regents exam. Now, Part C are short answers. You're going to see questions that, while they're related, come from the different topics that you learn throughout the year in chemistry. And one side note before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. It would be greatly appreciated. You'll get updates. I'm also going to do videos for physics and AP slash college chem in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get started. What you see is a lot of information here given at the top. Don't forget about this along with this data table. And question 66 asks you to write the chemical name for the compound that decomposed. We go back up to the top and we learn that a lab technician heated the sample of solid potassium chlorate and we also see that it's a decomposition reaction because you're only starting with one reactant. How do you name this correctly? Well, there's a metal and then there's a cluster here of non-metals, which means you have a polyatomic ion. When you're naming this type of compound, which is an ionic compound, the metal name is first. If you don't know how to spell or the name for K, look at reference table S. It is potassium. And then for ClO3, let's go to the reference tables. When it comes to polyatomic ions, we're not changing the name. We're going to just use the whole thing. Here is ClO3 minus, which is chlorate. The name of the compound is potassium chlorate. Here it is written out for you. It's not so pretty, but that's what you would put on the answer sheet. Question 67, based on the lab data, let me move that up, show a numerical setup. First of all, let me stop right there. Numerical setup means that you're going to plug in the numbers into an equation, and that's it. You're done. You're not calculating the answer, and you don't have to worry about units either. 67, based on the lab data, show a numerical setup to determine the number of moles of O2 produced. You're given the gram formula mass of O2 as 32 grams per mole. Well, you need a mathematical formula. Let's go to reference table T. Reference table T, second one, mole calculations. Now remember, we were given the gram formula mass. We're going to look for moles. That means... We're given the mass either in that paragraph or in that data table. One other note, there is a second time where the word moles comes into play here on reference table T, and that's with concentration. Molarity is moles per liter. But we weren't given molarity and we weren't given liters, therefore this equation is not the one we need. We need the one right here. Let's go back. I personally like to write the equation down and then plug everything in, one, so that you see it. I also think it's important for students to do as well so that you don't make a mistake. We're looking for moles of O2. We need the mass of O2. Here it is. Moles is equal to 0.8 or 0 0.80 over the gram formula mass, 32. There is your numerical setup. 68, based on the lab data, determine the mass of KCl produced in the reaction. This question is more straightforward than you first might think. The mass of the KCl, depending on the level of chemistry or your chemistry teacher, besides mole-mole problems with balanced equations, you might have done mass-mass, where you're given the mass of one, and then you figure out moles, do mole ratio, and then figure out mass. On the chemistry regions, what you need to know, you don't have to get that complicated, is that the mass you start with on the reactant side is going to be equal to the mass you end with on the product side, conservation of mass. We're looking for the mass of KCl. We are given the mass of KClO3 to start, which is 2.07. We are given the mass of the O2 that was made. So 2.07 is going to be equal to x 
plus 0.8. So we're going to subtract 0.8 from 2.07 and get our mass. For this, use your calculator. You don't want to make a silly mistake, especially when you know what you're doing. The answer for 68 is 1.27 grams. For 69, you want to balance the equation for potassium chlorate using, of course, the smallest whole number coefficients. The equation is here. I'm going to go ahead and blow it up a little bit and let's balance. Remember, when you're balancing equations, you're taking an atom inventory of both sides of the arrow and everything has to balance out and, and always go back and recheck. I just moved from left to right. We have one potassium on the left. We have one on the right. For chlorine, we have one on the left. We have one on the right. For oxygen, however, there are three here on the left and only two on the right. We have to balance out oxygen. The only way we're going to be able to do that is go to six oxygen. In other words, we're going to need a two in front of potassium chlorate and we're going to need a three in front of oxygen. So we have six oxygens on the left and six on the right. However, by adding a two in front of potassium chlorate, now we have two potassiums and two chlorines on the left. We're only showing one on the right. We need the number two in front of potassium chloride. Keep in mind that you cannot change compound formulas, you can only add numbers in front, which are your coefficients, to balance out the different elements. That's your answer. Let's move on. In the next group of questions, we have some information about bottled water and another data table. And question 70 says, state the number of significant figures used to express the mass of hydrogen carbonate ions in the table above. In order to be able to know what number you're talking about, you have to know the formula for hydrogen carbonate. You probably can guess that it's HCO3 minus. It's the only ion here that has H. And you're right, it is. But if you're not sure, go to the reference tables, reference table E, and find the polyatomic ion. Here is our number. I have a number less than 1. I do not count the 0 here. What I do, however, count is the first non-zero, which is our 1, and anything to the right. This is three significant figures. This last 0 after the 8 is considered significant. Otherwise, it would not be there. So three sig figs for question 70. For 71, Based on table F, write the formula of the ion in the bottled water that would form the least soluble compound when combined with sulfate. We have three positive ions. Sulfate is SO4 2 minus. If you were not sure, you would go to the reference table E for the polys. We're looking for least soluble. And we're going to table F. Let's do that. Reference table F is all about the solubility of ions in water being two categories, soluble or insoluble. When that question stating least soluble, what it's really asking is which of the three ions, they would be positive ions that are going to combine with the negative ion sulfate, is insoluble in water. Well, right here for the sulfates, they are going to form soluble compounds. However, there are exceptions, which means insoluble. And sure enough, it's the calcium 2 plus ion that is going to be least soluble. In other words, insoluble with sulfate, calcium sulfate, when you put it in water. That's our answer. Question 72. We are back. To showing a numerical setup. Remember that means the numbers that you would use to calculate the answer, but you're not calculating the answer. For calculating parts per million of sodium ions in the 500 gram sample of bottled water, 
we need the parts per million equation. Let's go to reference table T. We scan concentration parts per million. We need this equation to plug into and put on the answer booklet. Let's do that. I rewrote the equation and we just need to plug in. We are looking at sodium ions. That's going to be our solute. So the mass of our solute is going to be 0 0.003. Three, three, the mass of the solution, which is all of these solutes in the given amount of water. That's the 500 gram sample, so 500. And we need to multiply this by a million. Don't forget about that. It's parts per million, so that is part of the numerical setup. Let's go to 73 or 73. We are going to look at comparing the radius of the magnesium 2 plus ion with the radius of a magnesium atom. Well, magnesium is a metal. Metals lose electrons. That's why it's 2 plus. The radius of a magnesium ion is going to be smaller than the radius of a magnesium atom. And that goes for any metal ion. Question 74 identify the element in ethyl ethanoate that makes it, it an organic compound. Organic compounds are called organic compounds because of carbon. That goes for any organic compound. For 75, write the empirical formula for this compound. Empirical formula is your lowest whole number ratio. What you have here is your structural formula which we're going to go ahead and we're going to count up the different atoms to get the molecular formula, and then we'll get the empirical. We have carbon, we have oxygen, and we have hydrogen. We have one, two, three, we have four carbons, two oxygens, and as far as hydrogens, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So C4O2H8 is the molecular formula. I can divide everything by 2. And when we do that, we end up with C2OH4. There's our empirical formula. For 76, write the name of the class of organic compounds to which this compound belongs. If we take a look at this molecule, I not only have carbon and hydrogen, I have oxygen. Not only do I have oxygen, I have two oxygen atoms, and they are in the middle of the formula. That's going to help me figure out what class of organic compound we need to go to the reference tables, reference table R. With the reference table R, I literally just go down from top to bottom. I'm looking for two oxygens. That's going to show up here with my organic acid and my esters. But the organic acid is always at the end of the molecule and my ester is in the middle. That makes the class of compound on the test an ester. For question 77, determine the number of electrons shared between a bond of a hydrogen atom and a carbon atom in the molecule. So the number of electrons. Every carbon-hydrogen bond is a single bond, and a dash represents two electrons. We have a picture of a voltaic cell here. We have magnesium as one of the half cells and silver as the other. Question 78, state the purpose of the salt bridge. Remember what salt bridges do. They allow ion migration or ion movement. 79, write a balanced equation for the half reaction that occurs at the magnesium electrode. So magnesium is here. I got magnesium atoms and I got magnesium ions. If I look at the overall equation, I'm just going to pull out the half reaction. And that would be the magnesium atoms. Remember, anytime I have magnesium atoms, I have an oxidation number of zero. And then on the Right hand side, I have magnesium ions, but I'm not done, right? I have magnesium atoms becoming magnesium ions and losing two electrons. 
when it comes to half reactions, remember you're balancing in terms of mass and charge. One magnesium on the left, one on the right. I have a charge on the left of zero, and on the right, plus two and minus two is zero. For question 80, explain in terms of electric electrical energy how electrolysis reaction I'm sorry yeah elect, electrolysis reactions differ from voltaic well in terms of electrical energy right in terms of make sure you have that electrolysis reactions use or need electrical energy while voltaic reactions produce electrical energy let's keep going we are down to the last five questions for part C for the June 2019 chemistry regions exam and we're dealing with acid-base chemistry here I know that I'm looking at the formulas I got HCl that's hydrochloric acid KOH which is potassium hydroxide and let's finish this out for 81 determine the pH value of a solution that is 10 times less acidic than the hydrochloric solution well in the paragraph here we're told originally that the HCl has a solution with a pH value of 2 if I have a solution that's 10 times less acidic it means the pH is going up and it's going up by one number and that number would make it a pH of 3 with every pH number change, you're either multiplying or dividing by 10. In this case, 10 times less, less acidic meant dividing by 10. Our pH is 3. For 82, state the color of the indicator. That's brome cresol green if it is added to a sample of potassium hydroxide solution. Potassium hydroxide is a base. We need to go to the reference tables and as a matter of fact I strongly suggest as soon as you realize you have an acid base or acid base questions that you go right to reference tables K L and M so we're dealing again with hydrochloric acid that's our acid potassium hydroxide I know that's my base and M is going to be our indicators the question is asking about brown cresol green. It's asking about the KOH solution. Anytime that I have a base, my pH is going to be greater than 7. And when I look at brown cresol green, right, the yellow to blue color change before 3.8 up to 3.8, brown cresol green would be a yellow color. Between 3.8 and 5.4, it starts to transition to blue and then greater than 5.4 it would be blue blue is our answer seven literally beyond seven is blue let's go back question 83 complete the equation in your answer booklet by writing the chemical formula for each product that's an indication there's more than one we have HCl plus KOH this is what we call a neutralization reaction it's also double replacement and what we have is acids and bases neutralize one another by forming a water and a salt. And our salt here is potassium and chlorine. In other words, KCl. For 84, we're going to show the numerical setup again. So it's the numbers for calculating the molarity now of the KOH solution. We need the molarity equation, reference table T. We go down to concentration, and here it is. Moles of solute over liters of solution. Once again, I like to write it out. We have molarity is equal to moles of the solute, which is the KOH over liters of solution. That's the whole thing. That's the KOH and the water. Let's find what we need up here. And we have a pH value. We have a 7.5 milliliter sample. It's being neutralized by 15 milliliters of 0.01 molar HCl. Hmm. 
That doesn't seem to fit this. There must be a different equation that I need then. What does that mean? Let's go back to the reference tables and see if there's anywhere else we can figure out the molarity, which is capital M of KOH. Just like the word moles shows up twice on reference table T, we have molarity under concentration, and we also have it here for titration, where we have our acid versus our base. That's going to fit the information that we have, and that's going to be where our answer is coming from. We're looking for that molarity of the KOH. Let's go back. Now we can go ahead and put the correct equation down, my molarity of my acid times my volume of my acid equal to my molarity of my base times my volume of my base. One other thing to, that you would have to watch out for is if you have a diprotic acid like H2SO4, you're going to get two H's for every one molecule or a dihydroxy base like uh, CaOH2. In this case, we have HCl as my acid, KOH as my base. Here is the answer. You just plug everything in and leave it. Because remember, it's the numerical setup. 485, explain in terms of aqueous ions. So we have to keep that in mind. Why 15 milliliters of a one molar HCl solution is better conductor of electricity than 15 mils of a 0.01 molar solution. Well, since one molar HCl is more concentrated, we're going to have more ions in solution and therefore it's going to be a better conductor of electricity. Don't forget in your exp explanation, talk about ions either in solution, aqueous ions, ions in water, but you're going to have more ions or aqueous ions in solution for a one molar HCl solution versus 0.01 molar because the volumes are the same. That ends question 85 and the June 2019 test. Keep working hard. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and good luck.